Good evening, sir, and each and everyone present here. Today, we have been given this opportunity to give a presentation on the topic Turing machine. Let me first introduce you all to my group members Devadrita Bhattacharya, Ayush Mondal, Ishika Pine, Ishi Sarkar, and myself, Antra Gupta. Moving to the next slide, we will be covering topics starting from introducing Turing machine. So, what is Turing machine? Then we'll cover the illustration part and we will see Turing machine doing addition, subtraction, multiplication, and copying the data. And at last, we'll end this presentation with few examples and a small conclusion. Going to the next slide. Now, first, let's know what is a Turing machine. A Turing machine is a mathematical model of computation that defines an abstract machine, manipulating symbols on a strip of tape according to a table of rules. Despite the model's simplicity, given any computer algorithm, a Turing machine is capable of implementing that algorithm's logic can be constructed. The Turing machine was invented in 1936 by Alan Turing, who called it an A machine. The A stands for automatic. Moving to the next slide, the machine operates on an infinite memory tape divided into discrete cells. The machine positions its head over a cell and reads or scans, that is read or write the symbol there. Then, based on the symbol and the machine's own present state in a finite table of user specified instructions, the machine writes a symbol. And now that symbol can be a digit or a letter from a finite alphabet in the cell. Then, either moves the tape one cell left or right. Then based on the observed symbol and the machine's own state in the table, either proceeds to another instruction or halts the computation. Moving to the next slide, a Turing machine can be expressed as a seven tuple format, where Q is a finite set of state, T is the tape alphabet, B is the blank symbol, sigma is the input alphabet, and delta is a transition function, which maps from Q cross T to Q cross T cross L comma R. And Q0 is the initial state and F is the set of final state. Now, my team member Ayush will illustrate more about Turing machine. Over to you, Ayush. Thank you, Antra. Good evening, sir. This is Ayush. So, now I would be further proceeding with an illustration of how a Turing machine actually works for an input. Next slide, please, Ashka. Now, let's say the machine is provided with an input of, say, 0011. Now, as we know, initially the head points to 0. That is also, you know, you can see that is also highlighted over here using an underline. Now, uh, coming to, uh, here, the initial state is noted as Q0. Coming to the first transition, that is, you know, the first move, that is uh, del q, uh, that is the transition function, if you consider the transition function, that is from state q0 to 0. Now it means that it will go to the state q1 and replace the 0 over there with x and the head will further move to right. Similarly, the next state would be uh, q1 to 0. That means it will remain in the same state, but without changing any symbol, it will move to right. The third move will be uh, from Q from state Q2 to changing Q1 uh, using Y, and it will again move to left. Now, working on it in the same way, the machine will reach a state, you know, Q3 that, and it will keep pointing to the B over there. And using the last move, that is for halting, like if it is a transition function Q3 uh, to B, equals to halt, then it will stop over there and get accepted. So now comes like how a Turing machine performs an addition operation. Move, moving to the further slides, as we know, a, a number is represented by uh, in binary format, right? In any finite automata or say not only in automata, but for any sort of computation purpose, we are comfortable using binary format. But uh, in case of Turing machine, whenever we go for, you know, say, 
addition purpose or uh, purposes for, uh, for similar operations, we uh, completely use a different uh, method. That is, we use the unary format of the presentation. Uh, like if uh, in binary format, if we use uh, represent five as say one zero one or twelve as double one double zero, then in case of unary, we would be you know say using either all zeros or all uh, ones. For example, for uh, you for representing five. We would be representing it by say using a six uh, by using a sequence of say five zeros or five ones at a go. But say as of now, if we are considering zero, then for adding two numbers using a Turing machine, we can pass both these numbers as input to the Turing machine, provided the numbers are separated by a character C. Next slide, please. Now, uh, if we uh, look into the approach that we have used while solving this addition, then uh, first we convert a zero and the first number to x, and then traverse the entire input string, and then convert the first blank encountered in the input into zero. Then we move towards the left, ignoring all the zeros present over there, and also the character C used in between the two numbers that we flow that we were taking for performing the addition operation. Now after we arrive to a position just next to x, the same procedure is repeated again and again, say unless we get a character C instead of x on returning. The, now the last state is to convert the C into a blank and then the addition gets completed. So that was all from my side. Now the Vatrika will take over. Thank you, Ayush. Good evening, sir. Myself, Devadrita. Now I will be continuing with the Turing machine for subtraction. Moving to the next slide, please. So our number is represented in binary format in different finite automatons. Like 4 is represented as 100. Zero, zero. But in case of subtraction, Turing machine unary format is followed. In unary format, a number is represented by either all zeros or all ones. Like for example, 4 will be represented by a sequence of 4, one, four ones or 4 zeros. Now here we can see an example and let's use zeros for representation here. So both these numbers are given as input to the Turing machine separated by a C. So 3 minus 4 or 4 minus 3 will be given as 3 zeros, then C and then 4 zeros. So we can see the input and output here. <clears throat> Moving on to the next slide. So the approach is written here. So what will be the steps followed now? So basically there are 7 steps involved for this example. So the first step will be we convert 0 into X and move right and go to the next step. Now if symbol is 0, if the symbol is C, then we ignore it with moving to the right and go to step 6. Now what is step 6? We'll come to that later on. So next comes step 2. We keep ignoring zeros and move right. And we ignore C, move right and go to the next step. Step 3 is we keep ignoring X and move right. We convert the first zero encountered as x and move left and move on to the next step. The step four is we ignore all x's and c to the left and move to the next step. That is we keep moving left with ignoring zeros and when the first x is found then we ignore it and move right and go back to step one. Now the step six is we keep ignoring all the x's and move to the right. We ignore the first zero encounter and move to the left and go to the final step which is step 7 where we convert the x into blank that is b and end. So that's all from my side. Now I will request Ishika to take over. Thank you sir. For so the problem we are given is that we need to construct a Turing machine which can multiply two numbers. So what is the approach to construct this Turing machine? Firstly, 
in step 1, we must ignore the zero and c and go to right. And then, if it is, if v is found, it is converted into c and we move left. Again, in step 2, uh, v is not zero and move left. C is then converted into C and we move right. Again in step 3, we must convert all X into X and go right. If 0 is found, it is converted into X and we move left. Otherwise, if C is found, uh, we convert it into B and go to right. And then the machine is stopped. Coming to step 4, if X is found, it is converted into S and we go to left. Then C is converted into C and we move left and again Y is converted into Y. Then again we move to left. Coming to step 5, if B is found, it is converted into B and we move right. Then if Y is found, it is converted into 0 and we move right. Or if C is found, it is converted into C. And we move right and go to step 3. And here the process is again repeated. Otherwise, if 0 is found after 4th step, then it is converted into y and we move right. Then the conversions y into y, c into c, 0 into 0, or x into x, c into c, 0 into 0 are done. After each of these conversions, we move right. Then again, the conversion v into 0, 0 into 0, c into c, 0 into 0, or x into x, and finally c into c are done. After each of these conversions, we move left. So after this, we again repeat the last step, that is the step 5. So in this Turing machine, here the q0 shows the uh, initial state, and the q1, q2, up to q11 are the transition state. And uh, Q12 sh uh, shows the final state. Also, your x, y, 0, and t are the variables used for multiplication. And r and l shows right and left. Now, moving forward to the Turing machine for copying data. So, here the problem statement given is that we need to construct a Turing machine which can copy data. But what is the approach we can use to construct this Turing machine? So again, in this Turing machine, Q0 shows the initial state and Q1, Q2 up till Q11 are the transition state and Q12 shows the final state. Again, and uh, 0 and 1 is the data inside a machine and X, Y and C are the variables used for copy, copying data and R and L shows right and left. Now coming to the step, in step 1, we must first convert all zeros, ones, into zeros and ones, and we then go to right. Then V is converted into C, and we go to left. In second step, all zeros and ones are converted into zeros, ones, and we move left again. Again in step C, if one is found, it is converted into X, and we go to right. Then the conversion of uh, zeros, ones, of zeros once into zeros once is done and we go to right. Then C is converted into C and we go to right. After that all zeros once are converted into zeros once and we go to right. C is then converted into 1 and we go to left. Then again we convert all zeros once into zeros and ones and go left. C is then converted into C and we move left. All zeros and ones are converted into ones, zeros and ones, and we go left. X is then converted into X, and we go right, and then the process is repeated from step 2 onwards. Coming to the step 4, if 0 is found, it is converted into Y, and we move right. Then all zeros and ones are converted into zeros and ones, and we go right. C is then converted into C, and we go Move uh, right. Conversion of all zeros, ones, into zeros and ones takes place, and we go right. B is then converted into zero, and we go left. Then we convert all zeros, ones, into zeros and ones, and move to left. 
Then they convert C into C and again misled. Again, all zeros, ones are converted into zeros, ones and we go to left. Y is then converted into Y and we make right and the process is again repeated from step 2. Now moving to the final step that is step 5, if C is found, it is converted into C and we move towards left. Then all X are converted into 1 and Y into 0 and we go left. V is then converted into G and we move right and the machine is stopped. So for this step, we get the query machine for copying a data. So this was all from my site. The next part will be continued by Ishika. Thank you. Thank you, Ishika. Good evening, sir. I'll be discussing an example. Ishika, move to the next slide. So here we have the problem and we have to construct a Turing machine for the language L. 0 to the power n, 1 to the power n, 2 to the power n, where n is greater than or equal to 1. For this, the set of strings of language L, we can have 0, 1, 2, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, uh, 0, triple 0, triple 1, triple 2, and so on. This means that the Turing machine accepts the strings that have the equal numbers of zeros, ones, and twos. Furthermore, the zeros are followed by ones, and ones are followed by twos followed by a blank space. Now if we take an example uh, for this for the for this um, construction we are taking the assumption that we are replacing the zeros with x, ones with y's and twos with a z. Now if we take an example of a uh, string 001122 how we have to approach uh, the, um, the problem is that we have to first um, ch uh, check the string and whenever we encounter a zero we have to come, replace the 0 with an x and keep moving rightwards until we find a 1. When we encounter a 1, we replace it with a y and we again move right till we find a 2. We replace the 2 with a z and we now move, uh, start moving leftwards till we reach at, at, at x. After we reach at x, we repeat the same process of moving rightwards and replacing zeros with x. 1 with a y and 2 with a z. We uh, repeat this process of moving rightwards, uh, converting, uh, replacing the values with x, y, z, and z's and uh, moving backwards and repeating the process until all the zeros are uh, replaced with x, 1's with y's and 2's with z's. This, uh, means that the, uh, the, this means we have equal numbers of x, y's and z's. Now we the start the construction part. We should come to the next slide. Here we have our initial state q0. Here we, when we get the input 0, it is replaced with x and we start to move in the right direction. Now at the state q1. At, and if we encounter a 0 at state q1, we move in the right direction at the state q2. There, uh, sorry, when, when we encounter a 1 in the right event at the state q1, we can, uh, replace it with a y and uh, re uh, move to the state q2 in the right direction. Similarly, at k state q2, if we encounter a 2, we replace it with a z and move to the state q3. At q3, whenever we encounter an x, we move back to q0. Otherwise, we stay in the same step. Now, uh, at q0, we repeat the same step of going to Q1, Q2, Q3 and coming back to Q0 until we encounter a Y at Q0. If that happens, we move to the state Q4. If we receive a Y or Z uh, at Q4, it stays at Q4. But if we receive a black, blank symbol, we move to the final state that is Q5. And this is so how we have constructed a Turing machine for the language. 0 to the power n, 1 to the power n, and 2 to the power n. Moving on to the next slide, we would like to conclude our presentation. Turing machines are at a level which, that is much below the assembly language of any typical microprocessor. So in the practical world, the Turing machines are not as useful for what they can do, but they are more useful for what they can. With this, we will like to conclude our presentation. 
these are the few sites we took help from for our presentation thank you sir okay thank you very good presentation